ஜெனரல்ஸ்ரிபடி சர்ஜரி இஸ் பிராக்டிஸ் and uh, he is uh, the chairman of uh, ganga hospital and he brought quality world class quality actually uh, more than world class quality to every door step uh, in in india and uh, the, not just uh, he's got the quality service but also training to people across the world and uh, ganga hospital is synonymous with uh, trauma orthopedic and plastic surgery and uh, Uh, Dr. Asavbati is graduated from Stanley Medical College and uh, and he was the best outgoing student in 1979 and he also did his plastic surgery under the uh, famous uh, Dr. Venkata Sami the hand surgeon and then subsequently had two years of uh, fellowship in the UK and another two years in the US and then he along with his brother established uh, this famous Ganga hospital and uh, after that he is mentored trained uh, a huge group of surgeons from world over and uh, today he'll be giving us a talk on uh, what he has learned from great personalities he's come across sir uh, thank you so much sir a uh, uh, couple of days back uh, dr patta uh, got a call i was very surprised because first time uh, i'm talking to him and he said you need to uh, talk in this uh, forum i said okay and then i asked him what topic uh, should i speak and normally i always ask the person who organizes the meeting the topic i never give that talk topic uh, because then only then it makes it interesting for me also because uh, every time somebody gives a topic it's new uh, but he then says sir i'm not asking you to talk on plastic surgery i think you need to talk on a general topic and you need to tell about your life experiences or something you learned from people so this uh, uh, the title got coined as uh, what i learned from uh, successful people so any time i talk or any topic we have first of all i always ask a question you know, what is it so what is uh, i always used to put that what is i'll also come up to that why i am getting that why i got into that uh, habit so this morning uh, when i came into the operating room i asked everybody who was sorry was saying what do you mean by success uh, and everybody gave a lot of uh, a different sort of opinion and i asked my daughter gave a call to me and i asked her what do you think is got this success uh, she gave me a nice thing he said i i think uh, my servant maid is a great success because uh, hearing from a very very um, uh, poor background she has educated uh, three of her children and then got them and she is extremely happy with what she is doing so she said that success i think that's fine i think that's a great definition that is uh, if you all uh, raise up to our full potential and in that uh, process we do what we do and then we are happy about what we are doing i would really say it's a uh, success in the sort and i would measure it to success i'll give you and give you another example uh, we have a great project called uh, hope after fire where we uh, treat uh, people with burn deformities free so i had a patient who has got extraordinarily very very severely deformed hand that means he can't do in anything and a uh, fellow of in his uh, 20s to be dependent on the mother for even for going to the toilet every activity has to go and he just came and said sir i want to commit suicide uh, for which i am not able to do because i need somebody's help uh, so he said that's the state when you are and later on we corrected him and then what he did was after that he became an entrepreneur and he is now giving a job i think that's a great success so when you say put a topic as uh, what do i learn from successful people is not that we need to really learn from big people like bill gates or uh, top professors in medicine but then you can learn a lot of things from on the way so uh, first of all now i like to say about uh, so in my talk will not just be with the big people i think it could also be varied people not necessarily plastic surgeons it could be teachers and everybody 
so the the first thing i would like to tell when uh, we talk to my residents and all that one is that uh, more than people teaching us i think we should also be ready to accept it i think that's true and we have one of our diabetic fellows born in the uh, us one day uh, i was talking to him and they told him this is the way you have to work and all that and later on he sent me a whatsapp message what he said in that whatsapp message read a uh, teacher arrives when the student is ready that is a great saying i think it's uh, told by some chinese uh, philosopher he said a teacher arrives when the student is ready and the teacher also disappears when the student is ready really it has got a great meaning so we, we will be able to absorb things they provide and we are ready to absorb it because uh, lessons are happening every day and every time is happening i think the most important thing that we need to have is that uh, we need to be ready i think that's the uh, uh, first lesson that, that we have to say so talking of people i think i should uh, start off with my parents my brother and myself we always used to say that we had a good gene lottery you know that means we have them as our parents we have been a very lucky and if you ask uh, what is it that you learned i think i should say from my father i think what i learned is uh, integrity uh, not that uh, everyone passes through a very good life all the time and if you are uh, if you have gone seen things when things were tough and at that time to be good i think is very difficult see suppose uh, at this stage of life i think it's easy for me or my brother to say that we have to practice integrity and all that and we have to be honest and all that uh, but then when things are down and the chips are down at that time also if you see that you will not do what you think is a mistake what you think is wrong and then if you could hold on i think that's uh, i think that calls for everything i think that's the lesson you know that i that i that i took and uh, from my mother i think the important lesson is that uh, she always asked us to aim you know very high i think no matter what and she always used to think uh, that something is possible i think i always used to say everything is possible so uh, that uh, things that is possible i think no. that again uh, we, we need to uh, Really, yeah, yeah, really, really, um, so uh, I'll come up to uh, things like uh, things really influenced me. Uh, I was doing my MS, and uh, I worked under uh, Professor uh, Sarachandra. In those days, uh, working under Professor Sarachandra used to be the the best unit that anyone could have, and uh, joined that unit. And Doctor Vital used to be the Uh, first assistant i used to be with him and one day in the rounds uh, there is some problem with the patient and then uh, he just uh, blasted me left and right uh, fully i uh, think full mercury blasted and it was for a thing which uh, i was not directly responsible i think it was the, the problem was because of the house surgeon but then i listened to that and i got it and then after we everything was over at the end of the day when he was leaving i just walked along with him and i told him Sir, you shot it so much, but sir, it's not because of my uh, mistake. I think um, it's because of the house surgeon, and you really made this uh, publicly. You did this, but at that time, what he said, Raja, don't you think I'm such a dumb fellow to not know that? I know that he said, I know it's not your mistake. I know it's it's uh, house surgeon's own mistake. but then he told me a nice word after that he, what he told was uh, you please remember that the uh, house surgeon is here because she is posted but then you are here because you wanted to be so if anything goes wrong i will only ask you because uh, you need to take uh, learn to take up uh, responsibility i think that's very very important i think that's fantastic is that a word that he said that you are here because you wanted to be i think so better behave he said so that's that stands it good sir i can give you that has stood with me for very many occasions because for example when i went to uk uh, i did really go a little late i finished my plastic surgery and i worked for um, i finished in 85 and then i had been another 3 years i worked as an assistant surgeon and all that and even by during my post your days i used to have, I always used to have a lot of crowd around me lot of students trainees teachers all that so uh, i had a lot of problem getting there and then uh, when i went there i only could get a job of uh, sho 
and uh, the people in Stoke Mill realized that I was too far ahead of what it is today. But then they told me, there's only way we could keep you, but then uh, we'll pay you like a fourth year register. I think that's fine. And you have come for microsurgical training, we'll do that, we'll give you that. But then the only way now we could have you right now is that you have to be in a situation where these things still improve. But I had to learn a lot of things because I had to take bloods, I had to take the small things and all that. And I didn't never realize that first time if you have to give an antibiotic IV, a doctor has to give it, like all that those things, sort of thing. So as you know, when you go into a new setup, when you don't know the system, you are uh, you could really be you know you could have a lot of insults, you feel bad. And uh, my quarters used to be far away, and uh, they used to suddenly the night uh, the nurse used to call. Dr. Uh, Raja, do you think you know this needs to agentomize in the first dose? Can you please come and give a the first dose, it was right 10 o'clock, it used to be. So I used to be very angry. So from the time I, I get out of my quarters to just to the hall, I used to be seating in anger, uh, seating in anger, all this nonsense happening. But then uh, I always used to remember these words, you know, they didn't ask you to come here. I think you are here because you wanted to learn microsurgery and you are here because you wanted to be. So 10 steps before the ward, I used to compose myself and he used to be the most pleasantest fellow possible. So after a few days, you know, they used such a nice fellow. They used to tell me, you know, they warned me before. Or later they would say, so you, a doctor has to give it. Uh, the other doctor is there, would you mind? They say, okay, if they could give it. So I think, you know, this is a very, very important lesson. So the question is, uh, when Dr. Whittle showed me that day, I could really have uh, thought that uh, was, uh, this guy is uh, shouting madly at me. Okay, so I could have done that, but then you know, I really took it up. That word he told, I still remember the word. The yeah, housewife is here because she is posted, but you are here because you wanted to be. So you have to be. The another lesson that I learned uh, to, when I was in my doing my general surgery was uh, in Madras Medical College. There used to be a system those days that uh, the guy who sees uh, a patient for surgery, I think, whomsoever sees that patient. I think they got the opportunity, they will have the first right to do the surgery. Suppose you see a hernia patient in the ward, in the OP, and then you say that you have seen it and all that, then you will be doing that. So what uh, every person had to do, whenever he sees a nice patient, you know, a surgical patient used to write, the full name and all that used to write. And uh, one day they found in the, a very important patient, somebody has missed that diagnosis. They had written wrongly. But then below that, there is no signature, no? there is only scribbling. So again, they uh, little caught all of us and then they really very shouted uh, everything who did that. And then finally one fellow said, uh, uh, he raised his hand and it was says. But at the same time, uh, he also pointed out another uh, OP ticket and said, say, you are the same guy who's written this. Because it's a hernia, you've written your full name. And because you are, it's not something you thought, that you are not, you've written your name. And then he said, uh, Always, you know, uh, uh, he, then he showed that he always writes it in full uh, capital letters. So the next word he told was, um, you all must always be proud to own what you write. It is a classic word. You, know? you must always be proud to own what you write. And uh, before that, I used to have a, a scribble signature. And I used to put writing, uh, trying to write very stylishly, a scribble signature. But then uh, that day, that moment, I changed my signature. Then if you find my if you find my, my signature will be just I always write my, just my name, so it's be clear for everybody. So this again is stood in a very very good stead because uh, now after you go grow up in the hierarchy now uh, you are there. I'm so scared you know, when I see a patient uh, in the outpatient every day even even today this morning if I see I'm very worried because uh, you can never sign any other way. And I also have to write something. I think what's my diagnosis, and then uh, I, I sign my full name. That means I own it, and I know that I can't write a wrong thing. So that habit, you now which came in, so it really makes you uh, continuously feel that you know you need to really put it right. So that again was a big, big learning. See, these are all my very small things, and uh, you really have to think. Uh, first, I told you that uh, a teacher arrives when the student is ready. So he did shout that this to 10 fellows. Like, I don't know how many of the 10 fellows have taken that idea, but then you know, I really took it and I, I should uh, confess that I uh, greatly uh, benefited out of it. 
And uh, talking about Sarachandra unit, I think I have to talk about the boss also. I think he was a uh, walking encyclopedia. He was walking encyclopedia, he was. And uh, you always used to feel that how does he know so much? You know? He always uh, used to thrill us by our classes. You know? So he used to ask us to tell us how to study. Okay? He used to study, he said, you must always ask yourself a question. Yes, if you suppose you want to talk anything or something, you must ask the first question that you to ask is that now, what is it? You would ask. And then he also told us that uh, there is uh, nothing in medicine which cannot be defined in one, one uh, sentence. And he said, suppose you are not able to define it in one sentence, that means you, know, you are not right enough. That's what he used to say. So uh, I think that question, that again should it. So every time I used to ask, you know, so even to now, when I, we have our morning uh, class at 7 in the morning, somebody says polarization. I just ask them, you know, what is polarization? Then if you ask that question, what is polarization? That is so difficult. You know? The guy who may tell about the techniques, who may rattle about so many percentages, all that. If you really ask them the question, what's it? I think uh, you really would, uh, they'll all stumble because when you start reading like that, you really go into the depths. I think that's a very, very important uh, point. And it doesn't apply to uh, rocket science, but it also applies to small things like, uh, even if you ask, now, what is cardiac arrest? Uh, I don't know how many people, how many of us can tell exactly what's cardiac arrest, because anything we say, you may say heart stops, but then the heart stops so many times, you know, yeah, even in, uh, this is so many times to start. Is there any timing towards that? or anything like that. So uh, what is jaundice or something like that? No, very, it may be a very simple thing, but you then ask you, what is it? I found it as an extraordinarily very, very valuable thing. And uh, many a time when we are asked to give some orations, lectures, then give a topic, I always first ask the question, what is it? And then once you have that idea, I think it will put things in a very great uh, perspective. And the same thing I learned with Sarachan, I think this is a, this is a, a very, uh, I don't know whether it's a lesson or uh, it's a way of uh, life. Uh, he can talk about anything. Suppose he could have a gastric obstruction obstru obstru and he could be talking about emphysema and all that. So I used to think, uh, why is he talking a lot of things? But then even if he talks about emphysema, that's very interesting, very good. A lot of matter will be there. So on one Sunday, he took us a class, long class, he took it as a, we had to discuss about prostate, but then he took so much about varicose veins. So when walking back, you know, uh, I asked him, sir, uh, you talked about so much of varicose veins and uh, this thing. And then he said, why did you talk about so much, you know, about varicose veins? Then he said, he just caught me in the side and then he always used to hold the people. And then he said, uh, you know why I talked that? He said, I said, well, ask why? He said, that's what I read yesterday. Okay, he said, I read that yesterday. And then he told me the next thing he said, uh, if you want to remember uh, something what you read, you must tell it to one another person the next day. Okay, that's very good. And he said, uh, it may not be that they would remember it, but then just because you told to the other person the next day, I think you will, you will remember it. So that again, it goes to teaching, you know, so uh, you read something, Okay, it's not necessarily medicine. No, you read something, anything you read, and then you tell it to your wife. You said, you, you said it's only tell it to some other, one other person next day. Okay, so you just have to tell it to one another uh, person next day. So uh, that made me keep on talking, you know, so which made me gregarious uh, to talk. So that's again, it's a very good uh, lesson, I should say. So when I was famous, I think I also had to tell about uh, uh, an important thing, uh, which is very, very useful in life. It's not that it's going to be for uh, studies. I think those, uh, those two things, what the two lessons I told was about uh, studies. Uh, when I was uh, doing my MS, we had a public service commission uh, uh, interview call for, for uh, civil service selection. So ours was the senior most batch you know, that was going for the selection. I was the best working student. I had the university medals and all that. So they told me that you will automatically get selected without any uh, influence and all that. But they all told me, but then they are selecting about 1,200 people. But it will be very important if you get a good rank because that will tell where you, how much you reach when you are, it might matter when you go. 
I did uh, approach some people to see if uh, at the time I did not really that much of influence and all that. So I did ask them, but then they, none of them told. So I did go to the interview, but then unfortunately the interview didn't go well. <clears throat> Uh, not that I, I performed badly. The, one of the questions that was, uh, uh, why did you, you know, uh, want to join service, they asked. Then I was really passionate. I was really, very this thing I told you, sir, I want to uh, create a, a setup in which is extraordinarily well-renowned, a top-class surgical center, all that uh, duck, 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 I told. And I, 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 then I also said, uh, good academic background, so I should do that and all that I told. Somehow, uh, one, uh, one of the person, I really do not know who, I really tried to find out I know who it was. Uh, he said, oh, you're, because you are a university first, you think uh, you will be very successful, is it? He asked me. Yes, sir, I told you, yes, sir, I think I will be successful. Okay. And he said, it is okay, correct. He just made a, in Tamil, he told a funny joke, which I really didn't like it. And he said, we, are, we have found a lot of people who are best of going students who have become ducks. In future, okay, he told. Then immediately retorted back, saying, "Sir, uh, you cannot take uh, as you can't generalize anything, and uh, you, know, you only have to take the according to the situation. And each person is a very individual, and you cannot uh, tell like this." So finally, the interview ended well, and all this. But I did get selected, but then I got uh, 628 rank was my rank. I was so furious against the system. I was furious against anybody. And furious against the people who refused to help me to put away this thing. And uh, at the time, Mrs. Kameshan was the um, uh, vice principal of uh, uh, Madras Medical College. And she knows me very, very well. She's close to And uh, I always look at her as a, a role model guide. Uh, well, sure, she was walking on the corridor and suddenly she saw me and said, Some of the, how are you? She asked. I immediately told her, Madam, I'm not all right. Uh, normally, when people ask you, you don't expect an answer. You always say, Fine. Suddenly she also got her back and said, why are you not all right? Why do you say that? Uh, are you sick? No, no, I'm not sick, madam. Uh, this, this is what uh, happened. And I'm extremely angry with the whole thing. Uh, I told her. And, when I, and there are a lot of people around. You know, I think this again is wrong. You should never talk like this. So I just started to immediately cut me. She just cut me. She said, meet me in my room. Uh, I think it was very impertinent for me to tell about all that. I uh, called her with an... And she's a big lady, there are people around. So I did uh, go to her room and then uh, then I told her this all has happened. Madam, you also didn't help me. Then, but then no, she's very nice and she told me, yeah, I find you are so angry uh, because uh, you feel the great injustice has done to me, done to you and all that. And I did point out to her, uh, so many of my batchmates you know, who have got lesser and all this, this price and all this, they all got a better rank, you got 30, you got 20, 50. They're telling all that, and then I told that they'll all be seniors to me and all that. And what she told was, uh, in life, uh, many times uh, these things will happen. And at that time, if you want to be a really be a very successful, you you need to work beyond. They said, uh, if you really have to make it better, you need to work one hour extra than what you're working now. And you need to anger is. She said, anger is a very very good. Uh, 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 anger, anger is very good. It's a powerful emotion. I think that's the right word you used. Anger is a very powerful emotion. But then no, you shouldn't allow that anger to destroy you. Uh, in fact, it must uh, catapult you. Okay, it must catapult you. So, and then he, she told a nice word. She told us, uh, so uh, remember this, uh, he told in Tamil. Uh, the English translation would run like this. She, she told, uh, just remember this from a person who has been through many things. Many a time when things happen like this, what appears to be so important in life, he said, in a, as time goes on, you find they're totally irrelevant. They become irrelevant. So today you are telling about this rank and all this. So I tell you, you just have to work hard. And uh, you will find that the ideas to come to this, this, uh, what you are angry today, I think that point will be totally irrelevant. I think it is totally irrelevant nowadays. Okay, so now we started a unit and all this, and I think now it has become uh, totally uh, irrelevant. So I think that's uh, exactly, you know, that's a very, very important thing uh, that I thought you know, I learned uh, when I was doing my MS. Then I went to uh, MCH, I think MCH, I think uh, Professor Venkatsam, I think we really have to be a legend. 
And what I learned from him was, you know, uh, is the tremendous uh, focus to make uh, 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 this thing for focus to set up a major uh, hand injury center. I think uh, we are really, really, very fortunate uh, to be happy with him when he was really at his peak. He was full of energy. Full of, I think in life, I think it's also very important at what phase of life you are with the very successful people. I think even successful people pass through a phase, you know. I think there, there are some phases when they are really at their best. They are really, really at the same. They are very fortunate to uh, do it with uh, Professor Vikram Sami yeah, at that time. So what I, uh, I only take a couple. Of, I think I can uh, the whole uh, Zoom. I can fill up with that what I learned uh, at the time. And uh, what I would uh, learn from him was this: he wanted to set up a good answer service. So for that, you know, he put a red line and then everybody who has got a hand injury could come to, to, the, to that place. The red line would pass through staircase and the lift and all that and then finally will end in a place where there is a stool where this fellow has to sit. So because of this, so what happened in casual, even if the fellow has got a small scratch in the finger and he used to come, but then small half centimeter wound, just everybody used to come. And for all that, and we need to, uh, what we have to do is to make a full chart, you know, whether it's right hand at this, that, all that we used to write. And then used to be a big thing. And the next day we have to report to him. So uh, through to one of my characteristics, I always used to speak to people. I never used to, uh, because we, uh, with RV and all those days, many people not even uh, speak to him. They always stand three feet away from him. So I used to speak to him. So one day when I gave it to him, I told him, uh, sir, uh, you put the red line. And uh, for this, uh, I told him, sir, today I, I have written 25 uh, people came for emergency. And uh, the words I used to the same. I told, uh, sir, uh, of this 25, these uh, 12 people are good cases and eight are trash. They told you trash. Eight people are trash. They are bad, so they are not, uh, they are all scratches and all that, one, half skin wound and all. And then uh, he just looked at me and then said, uh, the he always used to ask, so they get the idea out of the head. He, used to tell me. he said, we are here to not to miss one digital nerve injury. And a digital nerve can be injured with half a centimeter of wound in the finger. He said, if you have, if your goal is not to miss one digital nerve injury, I think you need to see 10 trash. I, think I, I got that in this set. There's no compromises, he said. It is fantastic. It is, uh, I think that that is a great lesson. You know? The question is, you know, what do you want to be? You, know? you really, what do you want to be? So you want to raise up that institution. That means you always find if you want to do something big, you also need to do a lot of dead jobs. You may be interested to do replants. Or if you might be somebody is in a, a gastroenterology unit, they may do some weapons operation and all that, uh, something big. But even during your passage or training or even when you are there, the institution also requires a lot of uh, small jobs to be done. I think the fellow who is most valuable to an unit is a person you know, who does those dirty jobs. Who does what you, what you think is dirty. You know, they are not dirty. They are you know, smaller jobs you know, which you are doing. You know. So that day I said, okay, that's it. That means you know, you, I am so convinced about uh, uh, what we are doing. And the second thing I learned, I, I quoted this you know, so many times because uh, I used to love it. I also I remember it because of the same uh, situation in which it happened. And one time, uh, Professor Wengersam was very angry with all of us, and uh, he, he has got a real way of you know, putting off. Like he did all that. So end of it, you know, uh, always you know, never used to. Um, uh, talk anything in the body. I got a great respect for everybody who is my boss. So finishing it, he used to have a super select car, Fiat car used to have, and then he was working. I was also coming down. Going, oh, yes, okay. Then I told him, sir, today you uh, shouted to all of us that you are not working, sir, uh, but I have to tell you, sir, that uh, you are the hardest working group in the hospital. Again, Stanley, I think, he said, because every, when everybody goes off home, uh, the whole plastic area used to the team used to be there for another three hours minimum. Because we said we are the hardest working team in the hospital. So 
So again, you looked at me like this and said, I said, get that bad idea out of your head. Uh, never think that you're working too hard. Okay? Never think you're working too hard. Unfortunately, you are surrounded by beggars who don't work. <coughs> okay? He told that and he said, uh, you must uh, never compare yourself with people who do less than you. I think there is always you know, somebody you know, who does uh, who more, more than you. So that again is very important lesson because uh, whenever you go to a new center, you go to Stoke Mandel or Candy Stone, you go to Louisville. And you go to, particularly you go to a very high profile um, uh, centers, you also have a lot of high profile um, uh, trainees. In any place, in any trainee center, you will find it, uh, they, if you take the quality of the people who are there, it's always like a well shaped curve. Now, there are 10% of the fellows who will be extraordinarily bright. 10% uh, will be extraordinarily bright. No? And 10 fellows will be dumb idiots. No? They, they, they dumb idiots. I think all of you will agree with that. And then majority will fall into that. The bell, the, the, the curve itself. So, anytime you go to uh, any uh, particular unit, I think what you need to do is that I always feel is that, as uh, we said, you always to pick yourself to the bigger guy. So, you need to really uh, hitch yourself to the, the best guys possible. So, in that, what will happen is uh, you will work really harder. Okay, you will still set yourself in a bigger benchmarks and all that, etc. So in that, uh, you have to be, I was very fortunate when I was in, uh, in Louisville. Uh, we used to have a lot of overseas. I think we are at Louisville at the time of its start. You had to speak uh, when it was there. I think the world came to Louisville. So the world was there in Louisville. And uh, guys from uh, all the top units of the world there were there for uh, training. And you used to have batches. And I was extremely fortunate to be with, um, with guys who were in Japan. So all the time it so happened, you know, so I was with them. and all the people with whom I was there and all of us are in an external, all of us are done extremely well, extremely well, extremely well extraordinarily well. Again, all of us are done. So there's one guy by the name, Japanese guys, uh, I really learned uh, how this Japanese work and I was really found it uh, extraordinarily difficult to work with them, work with them in the beginning. So I'll tell you an example how they worked, uh, thing, uh, how you compare yourself, something not possible and all that when you complain. So we are working with Dr. Brian Bach. I think Brian Bach, I think plastic science will know. I think he, was, he has got the, he did the hand transplant, the first hand transplant in the United States. And the longest surviving, one of the longest surviving good hand transplant. I think he is I think he is the one who did. So we are working with him and myself on Akira Arika Ki went to the other Japanese for other day. And he told us that uh, there used to be a very, a very good uh, dissection lab used to be there in Louisville. And he said, we want to do a, a flap, that long flap at the time was very big. So he told me, if you guys go, go to the dissection hall and then if you have done it, I think you can do it. Uh, when this, this patient, you guys can do it. Okay, we are like, okay, that's very good and all that. The surgery was on Wednesday, okay. So uh, he told this on Monday morning, uh, on Monday morning. So Monday we were on call and uh, uh, the call was so heavy. I think we never slept. I think whole of Monday we are very, very, very busy. And uh, Tuesday was this uh, outpatient day. And you know, Tuesday outpatient day. And then uh, in Louisville, I think you need to, in America, you need to write a lot. Uh, everything and all that. And uh, uh, time was now 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 8.30. Berlin we used to have a huge clinic. So it was 8 to 8.30, you know, and the next day morning, uh, 6.30 you had to come, and then uh, 8 o'clock was the surgery that was posted. I was really not dog tired, dog tired, was not terribly tired. I was even wondering whether I drive back there, okay. Uh, so tired I was. So on Wednesday morning, uh, we came, and Brian by himself said, uh, sorry guys, I'm sure now you would have uh, you never had time to dissect. It doesn't matter, you know, you can still do it. I, I, you guys can, you're, you're very good, you can, you guys can do it. But then uh, I say, yes, thank you, I just said, but then I cannot told, so I dissected. Then I couldn't really control myself. Hey, I cannot, how can you dissect, man? When did you do it? Because I told her, uh, we are there the whole uh, Monday, and on Tuesday we finished at 9 o'clock, and we are there at 6.30 in the morning. And I asked him, oh, when did you do it? And I said, uh, I said no, I came at 2 a.m., he said. Oh my God, you know, I just got a shock. So this guy has gone home at nine o'clock, and then you know he slept for a couple of hours. That's Japanese guys. You know, so he slept for a few hours, and then he's come. 
And then if you have to see that, I think that uh, is used to be in university building. We all had code, we can go in. It used to be like a boot bungalow, you know? so you have to go. That means this guy is gone. And that dissection room, you know, that uh, cadavers will be in a huge fridge. So he's gone there, opened it, taken it, and done it, and then done it. You know? And said, this is what is called as you know, uh, no matter what. You know? No matter what you do. You know? So this again told me, you know, there are you know, guys who could work better than me. And you, know, you really, and you can't call them crazy. You, know? you can't call them crazy. I think you're a nice fellow. Sorry. Not that they didn't have a good family life, and he's got no four children. So they're all nice. Okay, it's only a question of you know, how you work and what you so whenever you work, uh, you always have to pick yourself any unit you go, you pick yourself to the top guys, and then and don't try to be the average. I think that's the lesson that you need to uh, get get out of that uh, district. So when used to be with Professor uh, Sam, you always used to say that you need to have purpose and uh, when you go back and I used to say you just did a copy Aravind used to say, don't realize how you used to call Aravind. So the Arvind, Arvind the eye care systems, I think all of you are aware. And uh, I didn't take it very seriously. Uh, normally I take things very seriously. Yeah, I didn't take it. But then uh, when we came back, uh, we really didn't have any practice. It was, it was starting was tough. So I used to be going around to a lot of uh, patients, a lot of lectures and all that. And I like, did one of the talks by Mr. Thoris Raj of Arvind, he was the executive director of Arvind. And uh, he was telling that uh, how Arvind came. And for those of you in the, who are listening who doesn't know, uh, Arvind is one of the largest eye care systems in the world. They do about 500,000 surgeries per year and 60% of them free. And still they are in profit. They are debt free and they are expanding. And not only that, you know, uh, they produce about, uh, I, I may be wrong, but they produce about uh, uh, 220, 230 papers, uh, publications a year. That means, you know, one every alternate or one every day it should come, you know. Uh, that type of uh, academically also they are very strong. So what he said was, uh, Anji. Um, what they to, Anji. what he told what he told was uh, uh, ah, when, they started, uh, when they started when they started in those days uh, only eight percent of India's uh, cataract blind were getting operated. So that means ninety two percent going blind and then they said and then they concentrate on the not on the people who are getting operated. I think it says that all the hospitals are fighting against fight for the share and the people are getting operated. And they found that a lot of people did not know that it's possible. And for them, you know, they still educate. They, somebody knew this possible, but they cannot come. That means you know, they help them to put camps and all that they do. They knew they can do, but then they can't afford it. You know? So that means you, know, you make it affordable. So like that, you know, that, and the uh, clean thing was uh, sitting back, I was uh, translating, whenever he was putting cataract, I was translating to hand injuries. And later on, I asked him, I uh, said, do you think the same thing with the hand injury, hand trauma also? I said, yes, it'll always be there. And later on, we found that uh, one of the important things why Arvind came was because of this founder, Dr. Vingat Swami. And they had a purpose. I think the, one of the important things, uh, purpose, the purpose was you know, preventing needless blindness. And you really have to have a, a purpose. I think most of the times uh, people don't go very far because there are a lot of goals. They have got a lot of you know, uh, these things they have. Just like oh, I want to become rich. So I want to be. I want to do a lot of surgery. I want to be a very good surgeon. I don't know why there'd be any other any any fellow who joins surgery wanting to be a bad surgeon. So, but then they are all not uh, purpose. See, if you have a brain, this is a preventing needless blindness is a purpose. Yeah, suppose if you have a purpose like uh, uh, something, I'll tell you how we did. And then uh, we just took over a purpose of, in my own mind, I thought we need to have a purpose of preventing needless uh, suffering due to hand injuries. Okay, preventing needless disability due to hand injuries. Central. So that is a purpose. You know, that when you have a purpose and you truly believe in the purpose, then what you will do, you will do a lot of things you know, which you will do, it, no matter what. Right? You need to truly believe in it. Truly believe in it, automatically, automatically it works. Uh, but the question is, you need to truly believe in it and you must be willing to suffer some things because of it. And you will find that because we truly believed in the purpose, a lot of things that we did for our, in our hospital for trauma, it came out. One of the important things I could tell about is a great example of uh, uh, honorable block because uh, now it's become a very famous thing because uh, even a couple of days back 
uh, one of the top um, American surgeons uh, wrote to me and said, uh, you need to tell what happened in Mutanga. I think more than that, you know, uh, he just what is the uh, most important thing that has happened. And one of the things he said was, uh, you need to talk about how you receive your patients. I think that's what is uh, most important. See, how we receive our patients was, uh, uh, when a patient came with a major injury, I think what we do is, the, nothing is done in the emergency room. If it's got a major mutilated hand injury, it comes with a big dressing. And uh, we give a block immediately. We just give a block. So having given a block, it becomes pain-free in about a couple of minutes. So a guy who travels about 200 kilometers and comes to Ganga Hospital in about you know, five, ten minutes, there's no pain. Like, there's absolutely no pain. I think it really makes him very happy. But then if you really go into the history of how it evolved, when you are very, very, very small, when you are very small, we didn't have any assistant. Myself, Dr. Bhatt was an anesthetist. And uh, my brother Rashid used to loan me some of the orthopedic uh, trainees who were there because those days I could never get a plastic surgeon to work with us. So they used to be there. So we used to be doing that. And in the small place where I also had to see the OP and see that a fellow said, come with a major injury. They used to, when you remove the dressing, they used to make a big noise. Yeah, a big noise. And then this was really upsetting because not that the others will get very worried. So, but really thought, no way, he just gave a block so that it becomes pain free. And then we started to move the dressing because to reduce the shouting of these people uh, who will be listening from the other side of the door. That, but then later on, we found that uh, it was much better way of uh, doing uh, receiving people. And we never missed any injury, and then it was very much better off. But only there is only one catch to that question. That is, uh, after this, we, two times, two or three times, it went off very well. And myself and Bitt were taking a small coffee room. They take both of us having coffee. Sir, he said, Sir, there's a problem in this. If we give block MC, he said, I'm very, very worried. Uh, he said, I said, But what is the right? But it works very well, but it is fantastic. The fellows are pain free. And we use the same block for our surgery too. What's the problem? Then he said, Sir, um, if we give a block, and then you're opening and seeing the uh, this thing, and then you're telling this is what you have to do. And uh, if somebody says, No, I don't want to get surgery then I want to go. That means, how do you send them, sir? Because uh, he has already had a block. Uh, and it'd be very bad uh, to send them out of it with the block. See, that means it's a real problem. And I say, he gets a problem. So I just told, but, uh, so, but so if somebody has traveled so long to come here uh, to get our service, uh, to get to Gango Hospital, has come. And if after they telling us what to do, then if he wants to go somewhere, I think that I could find this. Only one, one reason that means it's finance. That could be the only criteria. So in that case, as but I think we'll do this free. In whatever he offers, so if he can, if he says he can't afford it, we'll do it free. But then what we, uh, I think that's a fantastic, uh, I think that's one thing and that patient that sitting over that coffee and talking. And then he said, okay, so then I then we'll continue. I think that only led to very great things. But then we, because uh, we truly believed in the purpose, you know, that means we need to get these guys to do it. But it may be very difficult because uh, I've written a book on that and that I said that we did this. Uh, three days later, we had a, ch um, a chap, you know, we had a, well, four fingers were cut in a chicken shop, and I'm getting that. And um, we had to do four fingers were to be replanted because it's a straight shot, it's a straight uh, clean cut. Uh, it was a Sunday, and they came around uh, two o'clock, the uh, two thirty. And it was so funny to find that uh, all the three fellows who came with him were barchester. They didn't have any shirt on them. And this fellow was there. I opened it and then I said, uh, yeah. I saw the fingers. I said, we can replant because all four fingers are clean cut. We can easily replant. It came at the level. We can replant. And I told him the cost. They all looked and said, sir, we have never uh, even seen that type of money. And he said, uh, we are in a village near Salem. And uh, we only, the, in the villages, I think they say like Sandy or Sunday, they used to have only on Sundays and certain days only they used to put chicken shop. And we are able to come here because it happened at the, around 12 o'clock when we had the money. We had collected the test money. We don't have any money afterwards, sir. We don't have anything more. They all told me, we are all, I asked them, we are all bare chested. Uh, somebody had put in a uh, dressing over here, but it was uh, the article like a Venus story. As these fellows were coming and it bled, you know, so one fellow removed his shirt and put it first. 
Then after someone that shirt became soaked, and another fellow put his shirt. So this was three fellows with those shirt, and then this, and then this fellow told, uh, "Sir, uh, we can only tell that if anybody is near that village, anybody you have, and every Sunday we'll give some chicken. So that's what we can afford." And then Bhattu was standing next to me. He said, "Sir, I think we have to push this fellow inside the theater." Okay. So, but then now you need to read really throughout to really if you say that uh, uh, that means we did the four replants, no money, okay. And then you say Sunday evening, you finish on Monday morning with your got a full lot of money. So, but then now you really have to believe in. Suppose once you believe, I think there is no uh, half way uh, going around it. You know, that that's it. But then having a clear purpose, you know, that thing that uh, makes it very well. I think you need to have a real, real, real uh, purpose. You need to. Have. Now I think uh, we'll go on to uh, um, uh, people like okay, I think if you ask me what I learned in uh, Louisville. In Louisville, uh, what I really learned was you know uh, teamwork and uh, making a making a perfect team. Okay, the, that was a very very useful. Client was a, a person now who was a, he was also a philosopher no? who really loved the job. And uh, I used to ask him a lot of things. I used to ask him is, uh, yeah, uh, how do you set up a good hand surgery service? And uh, he always used to say, there are three A's you have to think. He said, uh, first is availability, next is uh, affability, and third is availability. And he said, it's in the same order. Uh, he said, a lot of surgeons were you know, very capable, but then you know, they may not be available. And then, if, particularly if you are uh, tackling trauma, uh, more, the most important thing is that now you need to be available at the time you know when uh, when things happen okay uh -huh. so i think that's what is the most important thing next is you have to be affable then you have to be very nice to people okay so you have to be very nice to people and the third is that ability i think if this all this combination is there it'll be fantastic i think that applies to any field a surgical field i think we'll uh, have it and um, uh, to this you know when we started the unit we added uh, one more thing what is called as the affability so affordability. I think in India is one of the other four is uh, affordable. I, think I don't know how, how long, I don't know, I can talk, but I, I think I should tell you this. And uh, one day with the Harold Planet, uh, this thing, I think this I, I told it so many times in so many forums, but I don't mind and I'm repeating once again. So when you're on call, I used to, um, uh, the fellow, the first on call used to go to the ER and then find uh, what happens. So there was a lady who had come with a small uh, uh, nail bed level, you know, uh, had an amputation. Uh, she had been flown in from Virginia to, uh, for the Louisville, to, from Virginia was flown to Louisville for a, for a replant. And I thought it was so funny, it is so silly to do so much for a small thing. So you have to India, you know, I always think of cost of effectiveness, why and all that. I said, I just told her, uh, I convinced the lady that you really don't have to get this replanted. You can make it a small flap, you know, you'll be fine. You can go the next day, it's, it's fine. You'll be able to do all this, all that. And uh, she also got sold on the idea, and then it's fine. So we had a small block, and he was there. We wheeled him to the theater, and um, uh, Kevin was a uh, stent. Uh, another co fellow was both of us were scrubbed. At the time, uh, Harold Klein had walked in and said, What are you guys doing at this time of the day? Yeah, and then, uh, uh, Kevin told to uh, Dr. Klein, he said, uh, Harold, I think they, they used to call the first name. I never used to call him Harold anytime. I used to only talk to Klein. So, uh, Harold, uh, this lady has flown all the way from Virginia uh, for the replant. And Raja has uh, convinced her for a triangular flap, and then we are just starting. Oh, he said, Oh, really? Then he said, uh, uh, Have you looked at the path? He asked. He said, No. He said, why don't you try? Why don't you go see whether you find able to find a vessel even if it's so distant? So I said that we both of us you know the, started looking at the part and then we did find the vessel. They were good for us. So we did find, really find the vessels. And then we put it back and then deep end worked. And then he came back about four hours later, you know, and then again he said, no, see, it worked. And the words he said was a very important thing. The word he said was um, See, she had flown all the way from Virginia, thinking that Harold will put it back. Okay, but you fellows didn't even try. And then he said, "If I had not done all this when I was your age, you wouldn't be here." It's a fantastic statement. I think if you really find uh, any great unit, you find, and behind every great unit and everything, if you really go back into the history, be it plastic surgery. 
and surgery or uh, tra transplant, kidney, urology, cardiothoracic, cardiology, for any matter you find. And if you really find that how it all came about, that means they would all be not like madly working because they have done it a lot of sacrifices. I think nothing comes out of uh, yeah, this thing. And not that you know, they didn't have a good life. You know? We will always think um, hard. nowadays uh, it has become that uh, hard work and happiness are uh, totally two poles apart. Now you need to work. Now I really have to tell you that how many of us feel good with COVID. You know? and we are all now uh, sitting at homes. And I don't know how many of us will feel very happy. So many times my brother Ashley also once uh, told or called all of our registers and said, uh, which day would you be the most happy guy? You know, if you, on a day whether you have worked very hard, you've done a couple of deep plans, they all work, big major surgeries, go home at uh, nine o'clock in the night and meet your wife, will that be a happy day? Or you not have any work, you didn't have any work at all, and then go home at six o'clock, which should, which should you prefer? So everyone says, no, nine o'clock, so, because that's it. And so the only thing, you know, you really had to work. And, and those are the days when you really worked and when you had to. So I had to tell about Ian Jackson, who's another uh, big guy. Um, I think all the senior plasticians will know him. He came to Coimbatore when he was setting up and all that. He was uh, happy and all that. Uh, I was talking to him. And at that time, I asked him, Ian, how are you able to do all this? He said, hey, Raja, it's very simple. He said, uh, the word he said was, uh, you must never hit the bed on the day you wake up. And you must get up early. He said, that's so funny. Okay, he said, it, it took really some time for me to understand what he said. See, suppose you get up in the morning today, that means you, you must never hit the bed on the day you wake up. That means you, know, you need to sleep after 12. Okay? And uh, sleeping after 12, then in the next line states, you, know, you have to get up early. Okay? That means you can't be sleeping just because it's after 12. So that means that the number of uh, the hours they put in, you know, is, uh, is, you know, is uh, phenomenal. You see, they put in uh, so much amount of hours per day. So if you take Bill Gates or take you know, any of these guys, you know, I think you take, if you really find them, you know, how many of uh, hours they have put in, they all have, have uh, put in uh, so much of effort. So I think it's almost coming about uh, about um, uh, 55 minutes. Maybe we should finish it off in five minutes. I should start up with that. And uh, Patel Radhakrishna told about uh, uh, teaching and training, how uh, Ganga has become a very popular place for uh, training. So uh, in that again, no, I should tell uh, we are we have had no uh, trainees come about from 68 countries. <laughs> so uh, that we about which you know, we truly we truly we are proud. And one of the things I learned from early was uh, uh, we should never uh, be happy or never be deceived by numbers. The numbers means you know we say because we have done we do so many cases, so many patients. And uh, we have to remember that just because we operate uh, so many patients. I think not that the word will come to our doorstep. I think what we really need to have is, you know, uh, is quality. I uh, learned it you now when with David Elliott. David yeah. was one of the past president of the Hand Society. He came to Coimbatore. And when he came to Coimbatore, uh, yeah, I took him to Kerala. And then uh, our dinner, he was talking. I told David, my aim is to, we need to create a fellowship where the best of the British Chinese comes to Coimbatore. The best of the British Chinese must come to Coimbatore. Okay, so then he said, oh, that's fine, you know, it's, it's quite possible. We can have. But then uh, he said, uh, Raja, you need to remember that the uh, best of the British trainee has also got a choice. Okay, so people have to choose you when they have a choice. So the, then he said, okay, uh, let's take He always takes a paper and then uh, he took a paper and said, now you need to think this way. Now, where does the best of the British trainee go? He asked me. I told him Louisville, Melbourne, Germany. I put all the Japan, all the, the top centers of the world, I put him. Then he put all that, tuck, 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 he put all the names. And then he, on the last stand, he put Ganga. And now you tell me, now, uh, now you tell me yeah, what, are, what all they offer. Again? Yeah. Yeah, what is the, what is the, what is the, all the other units offer? And then now you tell me, you know, what you will offer. My God, I just couldn't fill it up. Okay, then it really gave it this thing. You know, so suppose you need to compete with the world, and I think you know you need to really you know raise it up. And he put in you know, what the case load, teaching and training, emolments. He said and those at that time they also need money. So you know, what do you, what will you pay? And what is the micro course? Like that now he put a list he put. And then he said, now you just compare. 
So now you should now you should, now you know the answer. How do you do it? I think that's a very very important thing. So then we said now, okay, if you have to get those people, that means we need to work very hard. We need to have an externally high quality. Okay, just because we do volumes, nobody will come. And he also told uh, just because in China and India, because of their population, they have the highest numbers in everything. We have the highest number of babies being born. Okay, just because uh, there are so many deliveries that are happening. You can't expect a person from New York or Germany to come and to come to India to know how to deliver babies. Okay, they won't. That lets you know your quality. I think that quality part of it you know, is there. But I strongly believe you know it's uh, it's possible by all of us because if you really truly believe in it, you know, it's possible. If you give that, and I'll uh, give, I think I probably should finish off with this example. So when I finished my plastic surgery, it was uh, 1985. I finished uh, MCH. And at that time, uh, I, uh, I always used to think something we had to pick up. So I subscribed to the Journal of Hand Surgery. So at that time, uh, the only, there are only four people who are subscribing to the Journal of American Hand Surgery in the whole country. Okay, so because that, that one time I fell short and they asked me, can I get a replacement? Then they found that list it came. The subscribers to uh, India. And you know, those articles was uh, the Bunnell Traveling Fellowship Report. So there is a, Bunnell is one of the, considered to be the father of hand surgery in the United States. And there is a, a fellowship called the Bunnell Traveling Fellowship. It is given to the top, top most American guys to be given. Almost always, you know, the, all the Bunnell Traveling Fellows have become presidents. Okay, so the president of the American Society. That means it's very good. So I, I read that. Someone had written it very well. I just forget the name of the guy who wrote it. But I remember where all he went. So what really happens is this, um, this fellowship is given to them to travel around the world. Okay, it's a very highly paid fellowship. They can travel around the world. Anywhere they want to go, they can travel. Okay? And then they come back so that they are preparing for uh, future leaders you know, they are preparing. So I read that one traveling fellowship. It looked very nice. So I went back and uh, this thing, they tried all the traveling fellowship reports you know, I, I read. But one thing I found was if they start from east, if they start from the east coast, you know, they have the stop in the uh, UK, then some stop in the Europe, and then take a flight to Singapore, Hong Kong, Japan, back, or Australia. So uh, they take the Pacific, they used to drive from Australia, Melbourne, Sydney, or then to Japan, Hong Kong, Korea, uh, Singapore, they cross. So I was just thinking in own, my own mind, you know, I think we need to get these guys stopped down. I think that they fly across, right? this way or that way they cross, they have to get down. So that was my thought you know, in uh, 1985. But then you know, we did have the Bunnell fellow, I think uh, Martin Boyer was the first Bunnell fellow to come to uh, Coimbatore. So uh, he came in uh, to 2005. I think it really took you know, 20 years for him to, 20 years for us to achieve that. And one of the important things was uh, what uh, David Elliott said, uh, uh, if you want to get the best guy, the best guy has got a choice. Okay, so people, if you have to, if people have to choose you and they have to have a choice, that means you need to be special. And then you need to make your unit a lot better. So when uh, Martin Boyer, when he came, he was impressed and he said, Raja, if I become the president, when I become, he, said, he didn't say if I become, he said, when I become president, he was confident he's going to become president. When I become president, I think India or Israel will be the host country. I think a guest country. He said every year they take one guy. I think India has never been a guest nation. They have never been invited as a guest nation to an American society. They have a 75 year history. And uh, this year, I think it took Martin Boyer 15 years for him to become president. He came in 2005. In 2020, this year is the president. And he said, and this year he said, I told you, I keep my word. You know, I think India will be the guest nation. So you are invited. So the question is, uh, I personally feel. Uh, uh, Everything is um, possible. And the only thing is that you know, we need to have a very, very uh, clear uh, purpose. So if you say, I want to become a good teaching center, I think that nothing will work, you know, it won't work. But if you have a purpose like, you know, you need to get the best of the trainees around the world to come, okay, then things will work. Okay, if you say that I want to become rich, it doesn't work. But then if you say that I want to create a big center, I want to create a unit, I want to do something, then automatically what will happen is now you will get all that, you will know, you, you, all be getting it. So perhaps, but I think you know, I stop here because it's now uh, 
uh, one hour. Uh, I think you don't. Uh, and then if anybody is asking any questions, I'll be too happy to answer uh, any Sir, discussion. I don't have words to describe how motivating and how inspiring your lecture was. I haven't heard a more inspiring lecture till date. I'll open it to the audience now and please raise your hand because all of you don't crash the computer. There are mm -hmm. 300 people. This is the biggest audience we ever had till date. So 300 was the number. And uh, if anyone wants to please raise your hand and I will call the name and that, that's when you want to answer. Swaha Chattopadhyay. Please uh, uh, unmute your microphone and then ask your question. Swaha. Uh, just one. Yeah, just one. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Just put your camera on and come here. Oh. Yeah, this one, yes. What's your question? Yes, sir. Yeah. Hello. Sir, yeah, what yeah, is yeah. Uh, um, what is the need? Uh, is it uh, compulsory to do a super specialty, sir? Yeah, is it there? Okay? Is it compulsory to do a super specialty? Okay. I think uh, this is not so. No? It's, it's all a or, or only only tra training is important, sir. Uh, if you are training yes, or uh, you want a degree, you mean? Is that the question? You do? Should you think you have to get a degree? No, sir, I'm, 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 I'm asking whether the training, getting a degree is more important or getting training is more important, sir. So I would say that both. Getting are an MCH degree is more important, or? Yeah, no, no, yeah, your yeah, yeah, DNB also is okay. Okay, uh, you you should get a degree and a training because why I'm telling you this, okay? Uh, I'll also give a go back to this thing. Yes, so when I was in the UK. I had finished my plastic surgery and all that, okay? At that time, I suddenly thought I should also appear for FRCS, this general surgery. You know, I got too far away, but then, uh, then everyone to everyone told me, you know, you will fail because it's independent. But I said, don't worry, I'll pass. Then Bruce Bailey, with whom I was working, he told me, you know, I know India. Okay? It was told to me in 1988. I know India. No degree, Raja, remember, no degree is a waste. Again, no degree, no qualification is a waste. Better have it. It might be useful to at some stage. It's useful. So I took the degree, and I, I can tell you so many times wow that FRCS was useful to me in getting it's so many places that it really helped. Okay, it gave us a, it gave me access to this one. Now I come up to your question of Indian situation. I'll work up. So which specialty you want to do adjustment? If uh, MCH you want to do adjustment, you tell me which specialty. Sir, actually, I'm an orthopedic surgeon, sir. Uh, third year okay, resident, right, right, sir. Okay, orthopedic resident. That means uh, yeah, you've got, you got an MS, no, that's fine. See, that <laughs> yes, that is fine. And then that's the degree now with which you have access. But whereas before, there are a lot of people who are uh, doing their MS general surgery and after that they work in urology or a plastic surgery for a long time. They can do good plastic surgery, but they never become at this thing. Uh, now you've got subspecialty like hand surgery, where FNP and all is there. They do really ask me, you know, is it all right to work with you for one year? And then that was the same and they should write an exam at the end of it. The reason why I say that uh, MCH is important is, okay, if MCH plus is important. Nowadays you've got a lot of associations and uh, diseases are coming up. And initially if you even take association of plastic surgeons of India, Anybody who was doing good plastic surgery of so many years were becoming a members. And suddenly one, uh, due to a certain things, you know, the rule came up saying, you must have a registrable qualification or recognized qualification to be a member. Okay. So then what really happened was, a lot of people who are good people couldn't get in. Okay. So you really have to get it. You, if it's possible for you to get a degree, which is in the specialty where you're going to go, See, suppose you are going to get a sports medicine, you are interested, you are an orthopedic surgeon, right? You are going to get a sports medicine. But there are you know, courses in sports medicine, there are FNB in sports medicine or FNB in spine surgery. You need to take that if you want to really become a spine surgeon, I'm thinking of 20 years later, okay? So this, I can go back to United States also. Uh, when we were in the United States, the, the first time in the 80s only, certificate of added qualification in hand surgery came up, okay? So at that time, the Harold Kleinert and uh, Suman Sai, you know, Suman Sai was a legendary maker. And then he said, you know, he also going to take the exam. I asked him why, 
he said in case of time in future and suddenly they say you know are you the most qualified fellow to do hand surgery if I, in a medical legal if somebody asks and there are now some added say, qualifications say, are you qualified yes no and then somebody asks you that means so he said no nah, it's so easy to get qualified he said i will also take up the exam and write so if it is possible for you to get a qualification is do that but then the qualification is not going to make you a better say, a good surgeon Okay, you have to be a good surgeon because I always frequently tell of all the patients who come to us and see us, nobody has ever asked me what my qualifications are. Nobody has ever asked me how many medals I have got. Nobody. They only are worried about whether my hand and leg will be all right. Okay. I think then it puts it in the right perspective. You know? Qualifications are important, but skill levels and being a good surgeon is more important. That, that Jordan? Dr. Jordan, you can ask your question. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. I'm yeah, calling yeah. from Sikkim. Okay. Um, and your lecture has always been so inspiring, and especially when you talked about Arvind so much, I could relate to it because my husband is also a fellowship from Arvind, and especially uh, Dr. V's uh, quotation, I think, which says that intelligence and capability are not enough. There must yes. be a joy of doing something beautiful. I yes. think your talk felt <laughs> all of that. So, so nice. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Durgesh. Durgesh, uh, Sir, uh, Good afternoon, sir. This is Dr. Yeah, Vamsi yeah. from uh, uh, Saptarjung, Delhi, sir. Plastic yeah, surgery. Yeah, tell me, Vamsi. Sir, because there is a lot of general surgery. Uh, Postgraduates, trainees who are there in this. Yes. How to choose like a super specialty? Sir? Should it be the degree that is mattering, or it should be the place where they need to do that should create, sir? Yes. Because there is options between MCH and DNB, and yes, the, right. also the place from where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, Any very, advice very, from your side to them? Sir? Yeah, that's right. No, I have a very definite idea about this. Okay. So suppose you you, you want to become a cardiothoracic surgeon or a plastic surgeon or a urologist. The criteria in future will be that you need to be a good urologist or you need to be a good plastic surgeon. And wherever there will be an exposure, wherever will there will be a, a, a good training, and in future where they will be able to, um, that the people who are there will be a good platform for you to jump. Okay, I think I will be choosing that unit. And I personally don't feel there is any difference between a DNP and a MCH, and if anybody says that uh, MCH has got a better pass rate, you know, I think the biggest of the exams that you are going to have is that every day that you when you see patients is not the day you know when you get your uh, exams. So uh, I would personally look at it this way. I think wherever there is a good training is available, I think that's the place to go. And uh, as I told you, you know, nowadays people don't really look uh, whether you are MCH or a, a, a DNB. They only matter you now. If you are only looking, if you are try, uh, trying to uh, strike an average life, you know, okay, the, the guy who just lives on, st struggles on to just that, the average guy, I think he needs to take uh, what degree matters and all that. It matters. Whereas for a guy, you know, who is going to aim higher, I think he needs to chase a good place. Sorry? Dr. Bharat Sardi, your question? Mr. Shikumar, Mr. Shikumar Muttu. Sir, is it audible? Uh, yeah, 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 audible, yes. Yeah, the part, sir, is sir. From yes, part, sir, yeah, tell me. I can see also. <laughs> yes, sir. It's a very wonderful talk, you know, yes, as well. And uh, so you, you, you have, you know, gone through so many professors in your uh, period. So I could see most of the you know, surgeons, they are doing a good work. They have more tense. And they 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 are not you no know, happy. Uh, what I tell I they are more happy person. And uh, is there any anything in that uh, when you pass? Uh, no, I think um, something learned from. Yeah, uh, uh, I think you know you will find that uh, um, it is just the same. You know, even those fellows who are not happy, you say, even if he has been in a bank employee, you know, where he was working nine to five, he will still be like that and brooding. Okay, 
I don't think that's going to make uh, any different. But I personally found all the top fellows who are really, I think, really lived through them, and all are very happy. They're all very happy. Their wives are very happy. Their children are happy. They, all of them are very, uh, very happy. But then, uh, basically, now you need to really have you now your uh, straight lines of life. Now you need to, you, you need to have. And uh, if you want to make people happy at home, I think what you really need to have is you, you need to communicate. You know? The most important is that you need to really speak to your wife. And I always tell her in the hospital. If you do something really fantastic, you know, go tell your wife. First thing you tell you tell at home, you know, what you have done. You know, so that they all, you know, over a period of time, they start feeling uh, that uh, your success is their success. Okay, I think that's the thing. Communication is the key. Sashir Kumar. Ah, sir, good afternoon, sir. It's always uh, inspiring to <laughs> listen to you. Uh, the one, one question is, uh, what is the secret behind your energy levels? The second, <laughs> second is as plastic surgeons, we are always having this uh, dilemma. There are like three, four subspecialties like hand yes. surgery, burns, microvascular, and cosmetic. So if a person is taking one line, mm. he sh should he just focus on that and go, or he can do the other things also. You know, you can. I think in the in the very beginning, you know, even I used to uh, talk with Shravan a few days back. Uh, in okay. the, when you when you start, you know, you must be a, your aim must be. I'll be a good plastic surgeon with interest in hand surgery. I'll be a good plastic surgeon with interest in aesthetic surgery. Because in the very beginning, you know, you cannot get so much of hand surgery cases or aesthetic surgery cases or anything to, to, to occupy your time. I always find an idle surgeon is a more dangerous surgeon. No? Okay, the idle surgeon is a more uh, dangerous surgeon because at that time you will loosen up your indications for surgery. And it's also quite possible that you will uh, do more complex uh, solutions for simple, where simple problems will be enough. Okay, so um, in that, that situation, I will only start with the uh, beginning. You must be a good plastic surgeon with an interest in hand surgery. Is that, is that, that's the way to start. Yeah, a couple of days back, I was writing a chapter on a Volkman ischemic contracture. I was reading his original Volkman's articles about him and all his reading. It's fantastic, you know. He has also said availability is important, and he said there are only two groups of surgeons. You know, he was telling his wife. He told him he says, uh, the, the guy who has no bread, or uh, for a guy who has no time to eat his bread. Okay, there are only two two, two types of surgeon, and he said it's better to be a surgeon, you know, who doesn't have time to eat the bread. He said they are more happier. Okay, so in that way, first you start off, uh, you should be fully be utilized. Does it answer your question, Sajay? You have to start off saying, I'll be a plastic surgeon with an interest in dash. Yes, sir. <laughs> sure. Dr. Thank Sailish. you. Thank you so much, sir. Sailish. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, good afternoon, sir. As usual, your, your talk is very inspiring, sir. And uh, actually, my uh, part of my question was already been asked by the, uh, the previous uh, mm -hmm. questioner. Actually, uh, I am a plastic surgeon resident from Chennai, sir. Yeah. Uh, what about the fellowship courses, sir? Should we uh, narrow down ourselves uh, in the beginning of our career itself, or should we practice gen general plastic and then we, we should um, decide about our uh, fellowship courses uh, later, like uh, five years down the lane or uh, six to seven years? Or yeah. what, what is uh, your opinion, sir? Yeah, for this, uh, Shailesh, no, your name? What is your name, Shailesh, no? What is your name? Sir. Suresh, Suresh. Suresh. Yes, Suresh, what you have to do, first of all, you know, I gave another talk also used to tell people, you need to have you know, the same thing, you know, purpose in life. You, know, you really need to think where will you sit, what do you like to be now. So yes. first of all, you need to think, you know, what you like to be when you're 45. Okay? Yes. You first think about that. You know? yes. So don't think now. You, then you, you, you take a paper and pencil and write. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. That means that they'll have a question. What you can write anything, because you know, you're not going to show to anybody. Okay. okay. You can write uh, anything you want. You can write uh, big, big things. You can write. Okay. okay. And then come back down. No. When you come back down, you down. Okay. You come back. Yes. At the time, you'll realize, you know, what you what you really need to do. You you'll uh, know one first thing, and second, where you like to settle is also important. Yes. See, suppose you can't uh, settle in a country or settle in a place where there is. Uh, uh, you can't be sitting in a uh, go to the middle of the forest and say you do hand surgery. Yes. Okay, yes. you can't yes. say hand surgery because there are no industries there. No, you can't. Uh, you can't do that. Okay, yes. so you you will have to decide where what you would like to be when you're 45, and then next decide and also decide where you would like to settle. Okay, that is again very important. 
and then you think what is that important in that place okay way what will you do okay that you have to that you have to think yes. and then you have to stay about now, where will i get the training to do that so if you go that way you know, it's much more easier and uh, once you think you know you want to get a training in your facial or you want to do micro then the next question comes out now where will you have the best of the training in micro the best of the training in hand and then that's yes. that's the way you have to go yes thank you, you think thank with you, your sir. heart and i don't think you're ahead again okay? this with this decision you have to make it with your heart as to where you like to settle and what you like to be yes sir thank yeah, you dr. dr kingsley kingsley paul yeah yes i i can ask you a question whoever yeah Hello. Dr. Sapati, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. This is Narasimhan here, Hari's uncle. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, okay, sir. Okay, okay. You tell me, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, I was so pleased when Hari forwarded the uh, invitation. Right? <laughs> and uh, I must say, I was very impressed by your talk. And yeah. as a coach, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you for younger surgeons is, how important is it? You know, your own life has been tempered by a number of very interesting pioneers who provided showed you the way gave you the tips gave you the insights you know got the best out of you you know how important is it do you think for youngsters to actually you know tag on identify mentors who will be able to you know shape and mold their career for them and how important is it for doctors to be mentors to such promi prim promising and bright students the I mean, mentorship is very important that you know you need to really, that's what i told uh, in the pre previous question uh, you always have to think uh, that is you okay you want to become a um, um, uh, cardiac surgeon anybody or a, a laparoscopic surgeon or a liver surgeon you just have to ask yourself a question now where is the best place where i could become a, be a liver surgeon okay and then you have to think as to what should i do to get there okay I think that's the way you train. So I suppose that's what he say. No, if you really don't have, uh, work very hard to uh, get what you want, you know, then you have to be satisfied with what you get. You need to get it to one. And secondly, when you get a mentor, you really have to truly believe in him and do what he says. You know, that's very important. And you can't. Uh, it, it comes in a package. Okay, mentors also will have some of their uh, shortcomings and all that. But then, if you have to choose a mentor, you have to do the whole package. You know, you may have some nutty fellows, you may have some nutty idea you may have. For example, now I, I like you know clean shaven face. You know, They're coming coming neatly to the hospital, I like you know. But somebody asked me now, how does that really matter? Uh, my knowledge in plastic surgery, you can't answer that. You know? But I really like if somebody to come. Uh, so uh, something like that. Now you you have to you choose a mentor, and then you really have to do all that the mentor wants. So then, you know, it becomes a very smooth sailing for uh, everybody. Sir, I think uh, with that we'll end yes, sir. because uh, sir is very tired. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll meet up another time. So thank you so much for your time, yeah. and we really, really enjoyed your lecture. Thank you. Thank sir. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, bye, bye.